This week's Torah portion has one of the most interesting characters in Torah. His name is Bilam. Bilam is the prophet, the sorcerer, the, I don't want to say equivalent, but for we, the Jews, had Moses, the rest of the nations had Bilam. He was a pretty well-connected person. And what happened in this week's Torah portion is that the king of Moab sees the Jews and their success, gets nervous, thinks he's going to lose the war, and says he's going to hire Bilam, this prophet, to come in and curse the Jews. So he sends out some emissaries and some money. And Bilam does a pretty religious thing. I mean, he says, i got to ask God. That's pretty cool. Like, they go to him and they go, here's money and honor. And he goes, whoa, whoa, whoa i got to ask God. It comes from him. And he goes to bed and God says, no. Wakes in the morning and, said, and tells the guys, no. And they send back new emissaries with more money. Higher dignitaries. And he goes, I got his God. And he goes to bed. <coughs> and God says, fine. But, you know, I'll tell you what to do. Wakes up early in the morning. Gets his donkey ready and starts heading out with the officers. And along the way, if you look at the story, it's fascinating. The donkey sees or senses this angel that's blocking the road. And moves to the side and crushes Billam's foot and gets out and he has an exchange with the donkey and ultimately he sees the angel holding a sword clearly indicating not to go and ultimately he says like should I go and the, the angel says go in the, with the people now it seems from the story that Bill did everything right like I don't know why he's considered a bad guy you know Billam's a bad guy Billam gets killed in the end Billam, Billam is seen as an evil man but I don't know what he did wrong he asked God God says no. He asked again. God said fine. Right? The angel ultimately, he ultimately got the green light. So why do we see that he's the bad guy? Now he tried to curse the Jews. I got it. But he got God's sort of like blessing. No? So if you look at the verse in which they, the angel says go with the people. Lech iman Hashem. You'll see Rashi quotes sort of a famous expression. And one of the most, I think, powerful spiritual laws. You understand this law, you'll understand a lot of life. The expression is And the path that a person wants to go, he is led. What does that mean? So there's a great Malbim on this for those who want to look up the Malbim. But the basic idea is we have a source inside us that we don't appreciate. It's called our desires. In Hebrew, it's called ratzon. Now, <clears throat> we think that our actions are what makes the man. It's not true. Actions are important. But really, 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 the, what we're really made out of is our desires. Our desires is sort of more intrinsically us. We may do things for honor because other people do it because we're embarrassed. We may do it for we may do things for a lot of reasons. But what we desire is uniquely ours. And what the Torah teaches us in the Gemara, what the Torah is teaching us here, is that the way it works spiritually is that your desires are really powerful. And in many times God, so to speak, will give you what you desire. And if you desire good, you will have good more available to you. And you will, be walk, you will walk down the path. You will be given assistance for good. And if you desire evil, you'll get that chance. It'll feel like God's blessing the way because you have seen success. But it's not God blessing success. It's your desire for things that are not right is how you get what you get. And so many times in life, we mistake success as God's stamp of approval when it's not. Success, in many ways, is a manifestation of what we deep down want, which could be to our benefit or to our detriment. Bilaam may have mistaken God's blessing to go or God's permission to go as that he was okay with or happy with it but the Torah teaches us that's not the case the story of Bilaam is the story of a person that 
wanted to do the wrong thing and God gave him green lights that didn't mean that God was behind it he chose the path of wrong and he was given assistance and that's pretty scary <laughs> because in our lives if we mistake success with God's stamp of approval we may be missing it the success we have in an area may just be the manifestation of our own desires which may not be the best thing for us as you see at the end he was given permission but he ultimately it was to his own destruction and humiliation it's not about getting what we want it's about wanting to get the things that are good for us when we're kids we want what we want you negotiate with a four year old over candy the kid's never giving in but when you have a conversation with a teenager or a 20 year old about maybe destructive behaviors they may trust you and say I want what's best that is the evolution of a spiritual person in the beginning at least we turn to God and that's amazing to do that really and say I want this should I do it should I not do it but I want what I want what I want and we want something so badly that we almost try to drag God into our wants and that's a normal regular way of thinking to even take God into your life is a huge win but there's the next level the Swiss Parsha is trying to get us to, which is, I want what's best. I want what you want. I want what you want for me. You know, every Rosh Chodesh, we say the prayer, Chaim She'imale She'imalu Mishalos Libenu Latova. We end an entire paragraph of asking for health and happiness and blessing for the month. And we end it with, we want a life that you fill our desires of our heart. Latova. What does that mean? Well, maybe it means whatever we desire in life, give us that which is good for us. Because sometimes I want things that are bad for me. And if I want it badly enough, I may just get it. And it's bad for me. There's a lot of things in life, I think, if we look at our lives that we either got too early or at the wrong time or we didn't get that we wanted and we look up later and go I'm happy I didn't get it then because if you would have given me what I wanted it would have been bad what it means to walk with God <clears throat> what it means to really be a tzaddik is not to drag God into our desires it's to elevate our desires to God to want but to always question our desires to ask God to fulfill not our desires but our desires that lead to good and this week's Torah portion you see it the desires of a man who got the green light from God but it wasn't really what was good for him and for us to not only ask God to fill our desires but to ask God to fill our desires for good that they lead us to a good place. That our desires are, are filled with holiness. And then we end up not only getting what we want in the end, but it leading to only our greatness.